Hi, my name is Amy Sullivan. I'm the current Vice President-Elect of AAAR, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 20th in our series of monthly as t lectures. This is a new initiative for AAAR being supported by the Freelander Memorial Fund. So each month, a high-impact paper from our journal as t is selected by the editors to be presented by its authors. Um, with these lectures, we hope to be able to highlight the amazing research happening in our community, tie our journal to other activities, and also give us all an opportunity to come together outside of the annual conference. So these lectures are being recorded, and you will be able to access them later on AAAR's YouTube channel, which you can find on the AAAR website under the events tab. In addition, each month, these lectures are being hosted by one of our student chapters. So I just wanted to um, note in particular about this lecture. Unfortunately, our speaker is not able to um, hear us, but can see us. So we will rely on the chat and also cueing him, um, but, but we were able to hear him just fine. Um, and so I want to thank everyone for joining us. And with that, I will pass it off to our student chapter from the University of Florida to get us started. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Um, hello, my name is Brad. I'm part of the AAAR student chapter here at the University of Florida. It's my honor to introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Seijin Yuk. Dr. Yuk is a professor in the School of Mechanical Engineering at Hanyang University in Seoul, Korea. He holds four degrees in mechanical engineering. He earned his bachelor's degree in 2000 and first master's degree in 2002 from Hanyang University. In 2004, he earned his second master's from the University of Minnesota, and then went on to earn his PhD there in 2007. He returned to Korea as a senior engineer at Samsung Electronics Company, and since 2008 has been a professor at Hanyang University. His research interests include nanoscale aerosol transport and contamination control in semiconductor manufacturing. Uh, welcome to Dr. Yuk, the floor is yours, and uh, Amy, are you going to send him a quick text? Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, something's wrong with my speaker of, of my computer, so I cannot hear you. So if you have any questions, uh, please let me know by sending me the message. And it is very uh, honor to me to give a presentation uh, for the ASNT lecture series. Uh, and hello everyone. Um, this is the title of my talk, Effect of Air Cleaner on Reducing Concentration of Indoor Generated Viruses with or Without Natural Ventilation. Actually, this is the title of the paper uh, selected by the committee of this lecture series. And my name is Sejin Yuk. Okay, uh, this is the background. Uh, actually, in 2015, Korea suffered from the outbreak of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, which is called MERS coronavirus. Uh, for example, uh, in a hospital, uh, this is the infected person lying on this bed. And not only the people in this world, but also the people located in other world were also infected. Uh, so, uh, at, and this figure is adop adapted from a newspaper and shows the locations where coronaviruses were found. So, MERS coronaviruses were found, for example, on the pa patient gown and linen, door handles, and corridor handrails, toilets, and even on the air conditioner filters. So at that time, uh, we had a doubt on the 
airborne transmission, the possibility of airborne transmission. So I began to uh, investigate the indoor air quality, especially the indoor air quality in hospital wards. And as you know, uh, recently in 2020, COVID-19 uh, spreads, spreads worldwide, and it is still spreading nowadays. And this figure is adopted from a newspaper and in Korea in August 2020, in a cafeteria, a lot of people were infected by the COVID-19 coronavirus. Uh, this is the uh, person who was infected and uh, this person was sitting on this chair for a long time. And as displayed here, six air conditioners were installed on the ceiling. And a lot of people, unfortunately, did not wear face masks. So a lot of people in this cafeteria were infected. So uh, we had a discussion about the possibility of uh, airborne transmission at that time. And as you already may already know, uh, this slide explains the routes of virus transmission. So there are dramatic transmission, formal transmission, and airborne transmission, etc. So uh, when the infected person coughs, then saliva droplets are generated. And if droplet size is large, larger than five micrometers, then it is known that the large droplets fall down to the ground within a short distance, one or two meters. So if another person is located within this distance, then uh, this person can be infected by droplet transmission. Uh, or if the droplets uh, settles, settle down on the desk, for example, and another person touches the desk surface, then uh, this person can be infected. Uh, this explains the formite transmission. And another possible route is the airborne transmission. If droplet size is smaller than five micrometers, then uh, these Dramnets are small enough so they can remain airborne and can be transported uh, by the airflow and travel a longer distance by the airflow in the indoor space. So even though the person is located at a distance from the infected person, uh, this person can maybe uh, infected by airborne transmission. So today I'm going to talk about by focusing on the airborne, the possibility of airborne transmission. Uh, this slide shows the size distribution of drum nets generated from coughing and sneezing. Uh, left hand side graph shows the size distribution of drum nets generated by coughing. Uh, the drum nets generated from coughing and sneezing are in a micrometer size range with a peak at 16 micrometer. And right-hand side figure shows the temporal change of droplet size uh, according to relative humidity condition. For example, the blue line is for the condition of temperature of 18 degrees Celsius and relative humidity of 50%. So for example, if drum net size is smaller than about 80 micrometers, it begins to evaporate to form a smaller drum net as time goes by. And uh, if it becomes smaller, then it can be airborne and can be transported by the airflow. And this slide shows the size the distribution of drum nets generated from breathing. So drum nets can be generated even from breathing and the sizes are smaller than several micrometers as displayed in these graphs. 
So these small droplets can remain airborne for a period, period of time. So many studies have reported that the COVID-19 spreads mainly by droplet transmission. However, saliva droplets that reduced in size after evaporation can remain suspended in the air over an extended period of time. And therefore, the possibility of airborne infection in a limited space has also been raised. As reported in many studies, virus containing particles may spread indoors and cause infection. Thus, it is necessary to prepare effective control methods to eliminate the viruses generated indoors and reduce their concentration. In addition, it is known that the particle matter concentration is closely associated with the number of viruses contained in the atmospheric aerosols. Therefore, to lower the PM concentration in a considered space is thought to be one of the effective ways to reduce the concentration of viral particles suspended in the air. Various, various ventilation methods, such as mechanical ventilation, natural ventilation, and air cleaners can be used to reduce the PM concentration indoors, that is, to eliminate infectious agents indoors. So uh, I think uh, there can be two viewpoints of indoor air quality evaluation. Uh, one viewpoint of IAQ evaluation is the interest in the delivery of clean air in the indoor space. So for example, uh, this show left-hand side figure shows the schematic of an indoor space. So ventilation system can be used or natural ventilation can be used. And for many purposes, air conditioners or air cleaners can also be used. So somehow, uh, there's an airflow. So uh, in this case, sub clean air is supplied from the ventilation system or air cleaner. And uh, the question is, how well the clean air from the ventilation system or air cleaner can be delivered to a local position? So in this case, age of air can be used to evaluate the indoor air quality. Another viewpoint of IAQ evaluation is the interest in the possibility of airborne transmission. So as illustrated here, uh, there can be ventilation systems, air conditioners, air cleaners, uh, a person, infected person, for example, uh, coughs or talks and generates uh, saliva drumnets, and those drumnets may contain viruses. If uh, drumnets are large enough, then uh, they can fall down to the ground within a short distance. But if drumnets are small, smaller than five micrometers, then uh, they can remain airborne for a period of, period of time and can be transported by the airflow. So uh, in this case, uh, aerosol concentration can be used to uh, compare the possibility of uh, airborne transmission. So, uh, First, I'm going to talk about the methods to evaluate the indoor air quality in terms of aerosol concentration. Okay, uh, these are examples of indoor spaces where uh, we performed experiments. Uh, and these are classrooms of an elementary school, middle school, and a high school. And we performed simulation to obtain, to predict the aerosol concentration distribution in this space. Uh, in order to simulate the flow, uh, mass conservation equation, momentum conservation equation, transport equations for K and epsilon are solved. And at the same time, a user-defined scalar is solved 
to predict the aerosol concentration distribution. So uh, for, this is the top view of the classroom. And it was assumed that there were 25 desk and chair pairs in five by five uh, arrangement. So, and it was assumed that an infected person is sitting on this center real desk and coughs. So uh, in order to simulate this situation, uh, we can inject aerosol particles continuously from this position. And then uh, we can consider the operation of air conditioner or um, air, air conditioner or air cleaner. And also by opening the windows or doors of the classroom, uh, we can consider the uh, natural ventilation condition. And while the aerosol particles are injected from this position, uh, the aerosol concentration at local points are monitored. For example, in this case, we selected five positions, one through five, and we monitored the aerosol concentration at these local points. Uh, a user-defined function is used to set the aerosol concentrations at the outlets of the air conditioner. Uh, in case of this type of air conditioner, the age of air, uh, I'm sorry, the aerosol concentration at the suction surface is averaged and the average aerosol concentration value is used as the input condition for the uh, outlets of this air conditioner. And in case of the air cleaner, a user-defined function is used to set the aerosol concentration at the outlet of the air cleaner by considering the filter efficiency. In other words, the aerosol concentration uh, measured at the inlet of the air cleaner is multiplied by the filtration efficiency and that value is used as the input uh, concentration at the outlet of the air cleaner. And this slide shows an example of flow visualization experiment. A laser sheet was used to visualize the motion of aerosol particles based on the light scattering effect. And, uh, oh, okay. So uh, in the rear part of the classroom, uh, a, fog generate, a fog generator was used to inject the oil part drum nets and this air conditioner has no filter in, inside. So as you see, it just recirculates the air. So these drum, drum nets are sucked through this bottom part of the air conditioner and discharged through four-way outlets. As a result, uh, these drum nets can spread all over the place in the classroom. So if these drum nets contain viruses, then uh, they can be spread. They can spread uh, all over the place in the classroom by the airflow. And also uh, this result can be used to validate the simulation result. For example, uh, the flow pattern can be compared between simulation and experiment. And this shows an, another example of comparison of pro, flow pattern. Uh, so in this way, we can validate the simulation result uh, by comparing the flow pattern between simulation and flow visualization experiment result. And another way 
is to uh, inject the sodium chloride particles continuously from a tube at a certain speed to simulate the airborne transmission of saliva droplets generated from coughing or talking. Okay, so uh, sodium chloride solution is sprayed using atomizers and the droplets from the atomizer are dried by diffusion dryers and the dried sodium chloride aerosol is diluted using a clean air and then uh, the diluted aerosol is injected uh, at a certain speed, uh, mimicking the speed of uh, saliva drumnet discharge from coughing or sneezing or talking. And we injected the sodium chloride particles continuously uh, like this at a certain position. And this is the uh, size, di size distribution of injected sodium chloride aerosols. Uh, they are mostly smaller than 10 micrometers and the peak appeared in the sub micrometer range. So we assume that uh, this aerosol can be used to simulate the particles smaller than five micrometers, which are the size considered for the drumnet transmission. Uh, I'm sorry, airborne transmission. So uh, this is the top view of the classroom. Uh, this is the position of uh, sodium chloride aerosol injection. So aerosol is continuously injected from this position and the change of number concentration at different local points are measured using optical particle counters. And this is the example of the measurement results. So as you see, uh, after a long time, the aerosol concentration at a steady flow operation condition is saturated and as you see, the local concentrations approaches certain values. So by comparing these saturated concentrations, uh, we can compare the possibility of airborne transmission uh, at each local points. And this shows the comparison of aerosol concentration between simulation and experiment. So the left-hand side figures show the simulation results of uh, concentration, aerosol concentration, and right-hand side graph shows the comparison. Uh, the y-axis shows the normalized uh, concentration. I mean the normalized by initial concent uh, uh, concentration, initial concentration. So as you see, the normalized concentration agrees very well uh, between simulation and experiment. So uh, using these methods, uh, we can predict the aerosol concentration distribution in an indoor space. And for example, uh, this is the location of uh, injection of the drum nets from an infected person and the drum net concentration distribution appears like this. Then we can compare the possibility of airborne transmission uh, among local points. Okay, and now I'm going to talk about another way of evaluating the indoor air quality in terms of the age of air. Okay, uh, for example, uh, this shows a laboratory to simulate a four bed world. So uh, there are four hospital beds and there's an air cleaner and air conditioner and a ventilation system. 
So these are ventilation system outlets and there are ventilation system inlets, which is not shown in this photo. And hospital ward, ward curtains were also considered. And initially this space is filled with uh, a, lot of, a lot of particles, smaller than five micrometers. And those particles are generated by incense burning. And then uh, air cleaner, ventilation system, or air conditioner are operated. And by using uh, CPCs or OPCs, uh, we measure the change of temporal change of concentration at several local points. And the age of air is used as an air quality index. Uh, age of air can be simulated in this way. Uh, the age of, age of air means the time for the clean air supplied from the ventilation system or air cleaner to reach a certain local point. And this is the equation to calculate the age of air, and it is the ratio of particle concentration at a specific location integrated as a function of time. First, flow distribution is simulated by solving these equations, and a user defined scalar is used to predict the age of air distribution. Uh, in order to reflect the effect of air conditioner uh, or air cleaner, a user-defined function is prepared. And this shows an example of the experimental result. Uh, I mean, the aerosol concentration measured at several local points in the indoor space. And y-axis shows the uh, concentration, temporal change of concentration normalized by the initial concentration. So as I told you earlier, this indoor space is filled with a lot of particles generated by incense burning. And by the operation of the air cleaner or ventilation system, uh, the particles are removed. And as a result, the local aerosol concentration decreases like this in an exponential decay. Even though the uh, decay rates are different, uh, they show the exponential decay. So uh, temporal change of aerosol concentration, C sub T of T can be fitted to this equation where C sub zero is the initial concentration and C sub infinity is the concentration converged to a constant value after a long time in response to the operation of ventilation systems or air cleaners. Dividing both sides of the above equation by C zero and then integrating as a function of time, we obtain the second equation if filtration efficiency is high enough, then uh, the C sub infinity approaches zero or becomes very small. So if C sub zero is assumed to be zero in this equation, then we obtain the third equation. And if third equation is compared with this equation, then you see that they are the same. So it means that uh, this equation, fitting equation can be used uh, to obtain the age of air experimentally. Actually, we developed this method uh, to evaluate the age of air by using the aerosol concentration. As you may know, uh, Generally, they use the trace gas, for example, CO2, 
uh, to evaluate the age of air in an indoor space. But uh, by considering the particle removal or reduction of, I mean, the removing of uh, particles containing viruses, uh, we, I thought that we need to develop a method to evaluate the age of air by using aerosols. So uh, in this way, uh, we can fit this experimental result to this equation. Uh, in the experiment, the initial concentration is set to be much higher than the background concentration. So the background concentration uh, can be negligible compared to the initial concentration. So uh, in this equation, uh, this equation is slightly uh, reduced to this final form. So by using this equation, in other words, by fitting this experimental result to this equation, uh, we can determine the age of error by experimental means. So here tau p is the uh, age of error determined by experimental way. And this slide shows an example of simulation results. So this is the flow field distribution and this is the age of error distribution. Uh, if you compare these two, you see that the age of error is greatly dependent on the flow flow pattern in the indoor space. And this shows an example of the comparison of age of air between simulation and experiment. Uh, as, as you see, uh, this is the comparison of age of air at seven different local points, and they agree very well. And uh, we found that uh, the error between the simulation and the experiment is generally smaller than plus minus 10%. So uh, we see that uh, this method, experimental method can effectively used to assess the age of error by using aerosol particles. Okay, now, uh, I'm going to talk about the contents of the selected paper, effect of air cleaner on reducing concentration of indoor generated viruses with or without natural ventilation. And this is the publication information. Uh, various ventilation methods, such as mechanical ventilation, natural ventilation, and air cleaners can be used to reduce the PM concentration indoors. That is to eliminate infectious agents indoors. Recently constructed buildings are well equipped with mechanical ventilation systems. However, in most cases, old buildings lack such ventilation systems. So it is necessary to examine the effects of ventilation methods that use natural ventilation and air cleaners. It is known that young people of ages from zero to 22 may be an important source of virus spread, even though they have mild disease or lack of symptoms. It is there in this study, therefore, a classroom was considered as an indoor space with many people and an efficient ventilation strategy to reduce the spread of viruses in the classroom, especially the classroom without a mechanical ventilation system was devised and the age of air was used as an index to evaluate the indoor air quality. In other words, the lower the age of air, the lower the possibility of airborne transmission. Uh, I mean, the higher, I'm sorry, the lower the age of air, the higher possibility of uh, removing the particles possibly containing viruses. Okay, uh, this is show, this shows the actual classroom used for the validation of simulation model. Uh, this is a middle school classroom. 
And as shown in this schematic, uh, there were 36 desk and chair pairs in six by six arrangement. And this is an old building. So there were no ventilation systems. So an air cleaner and natural ventilation were used to ventilate the air indoors. And this is the top view of the classroom. Uh, initially, this classroom was filled with a lot of particles generated from incense burning and then uh, local concentrations at eight positions from A to H were measured using OPCs. And the decay of concentration was measured and age of air at local points were determined. And this shows the schematic of the air cleaner used for the experiment. So air is sucked from the side wall and uh, is discharged from the top surface vertically. The flow rate and the age of air were analyzed using ANSYS Fluent, which is a commercial CFD code. The air flow was simulated by solving the continuity momentum and transport equations, and the air flow was assumed to be steady, incompressible, and turbulent. For the analysis of turbulent flow, the K epsilon turbulence model was used. The age of air was calculated by using the user-defined scalar as described earlier. A user-defined function was prepared so that the filter efficiency could be reflected in calculating the age of air in numerical simulation. In other words, the average of the age of air formed on the inlet surface of the air cleaner was multiplied by the filter efficiency to set the age of air on the outlet surface of the air cleaner. Uh, this shows the simulation results. Left-hand left side shows the velocity distribution and right-hand side shows the age of air distribution. So as you see, the flow discharged from the air cleaner affected the front area of the classroom and hardly affected the rear area. So if you look at the right-hand side graph, uh, figure, the age of air is very low near the air cleaner, but in the rear area of the classroom, the age of air value is very high. Because, uh, because of large recirculation in this classroom, and it means that the clean air uh, can hardly be reached the rear part of the classroom. Uh, and this slide explains the experimental method. The age of air in the classroom was obtained by measuring the reduction in particle number concentration caused by the operation of an air cleaner. Uh, of course, the Natural ventilation was not considered for the experiment. So the windows and doors of the classroom were all closed. Since the experiment using the actual virus containing particles is not possible in real classrooms, particles were generated by burning incense in the classroom with all windows and doors closed to simulate the indoor particles possibly containing harmful viruses. The particles generated by incense burning were mostly smaller than several micrometers in size. And thus it was assumed that these particles could be used to simulate the movement of the airborne virus containing particles of the sizes less than five micrometers. In other words, particles considered for airborne transmission. The measurement height for the particle number concentration was set to be 0.5 92 meter from the floor, considering an average pop-lithial height of 0.4 meter, 
and an average sitting shoulder height of 0.5 meter for 13 year old Korean students. And this is the, this explains the experimental approach. Fine particles were generated by incense burning with all windows and doors closed. And incense burning was stopped when the PM10 concentration exceeded 100 microgram per cubic centimeter. This is a very high concentration value compared to the normal background concentration. And then electric fans were operated for more than 10 minutes to evenly distri distribute the particles in the indoor space. And we waited for about 10 minutes after turning off the fans to stabilize particle concentration. And then air cleaner was turned on and measurement of particle number concentration began using OPCs at, at different local locations. This is an example of experimental data at a certain local point. Uh, and y-axis value is the normalized particle concentration. So particle concentration normalized by the initial concentration. As you see, it shows an exponential decay. So this experimental data is fitted to this equation as explained earlier. And by obtaining the value of tau sub p, we can determine the age of air experimentally by using aerosol particles. And this shows the comparison of age of air between simulation and experiment uh, measured at eight different locations. So simulation results agreed well with the experimental data with the error of less than 10%. So this confirm, confirms that the prediction accuracy of the simulation method is high. Based on this validation result, the age of air distribution in a standard classroom was numerically investigated in the following analysis. Uh, due to the diversity of classroom dimensions, numbers and arrangements for desks and chairs, a Korean standard classroom model M75 was considered. And this is the schematic of the standard classroom M75. Uh, by considering the average number of students in Korean high schools, uh, 25 pairs of desks and chairs were considered and they were arranged in five by five arrangement. Uh, there were four windows on the outside wall and two corridor windows. And there was a front door and rear door. So by opening these doors and windows, uh, we can consider the natural ventilation. And at the same time, an air cleaner was used to uh, remove the particles generated indoors. And the center figures show the top views of the classroom and upper center figure shows the location of the air cleaner. One air cleaner was used and its operation location was changed as shown here, S1, S2, S3, and S4. And the bottom center figure shows the measurement points. So at these five points, uh, we measure the number concentration of aerosols by using five OPCs. And right figure shows the types of air cleaners considered in this study. So vertical discharge type and horizontal discharge type. So here, the left one, left model discharges air upwards vertically, and right side model discharges air horizontally from this point. 
So we consider these two different types of air cleaners. And this table shows the simulation, simulation cases for air cleaner and natural ventilation. The cases, uh, for the cases one through 10, only an air cleaner was operated without natural ventilation. For cases 11 through 14, only the natural ventilation was applied with, without operating the air cleaner. For cases 15 through 18, both air cleaner and natural ventilation were used. And, oh, sorry. And air cleaner flow rate was said to be 576 cubic meters per hour or 1152 CMH. They corresponded to three air changes per hour or six air changes per hour. Actually, uh, it is recommended to have six air changes per hour for classrooms. Natural ventilation flow rate was set to satisfy six ACH with all doors and windows fully opened and three ACH with those half opened. This slide shows the effect of filter efficiency of air cleaner. So the filter efficiency were varied as 99% which is the HEPA filter, 50% uh, and 0%. So as you see, the age of air at the measurement points increases as the filter efficiency decreases. And the average age of air at 50% filter efficiency was approximately twice as high as the average age of air at 99% filtration efficiency. This implies that virus containing particles can recirculate indoors without being effectively removed by the air cleaner. If the filter efficiency degrades over time, it is therefore important to maintain high filter efficiency by regularly replacing the filter or to apply a device with effective virus remover for the air cleaner. This slide shows the effect of operating position of an air cleaner. And an air cleaner was operated and its operating position was varied as shown in this, in this figure. And the results are displayed in these graphs. Uh, for example, when the air cleaner was operated at position S1, you can look at this graph. The age of air at positions one and two, the rear corners showed relatively higher values, while the AG of air values were lo relatively lower at other positions. And if the air, air cleaner was operated in this position as three, the rear center of the classroom, then uh, these two front corners showed relatively higher concentration while the age of air at other positions were relatively low. So the local age of air varied a lot depending, uh, depending on the operate, operating position of an air cleaner. So the air cleaner must be installed considering areas where virus reduction is important. This slide shows the effect of discharge height of air cleaner when the vertical discharge type air cleaner was used and its operating position was varied as illustrated here. Uh, the discharge height, if you compare these two graphs, uh, the operating position of the air cleaner was the same as one position, but discharge height was different, one meter or two meters. The tendencies are similar, but uh, absolute values are slightly different. 
The discharge height in case of the vertical discharge type air cleaner does not greatly affect the age of air, but a higher discharge height is slightly more helpful in reducing indoor viruses when the air cleaner is installed at the center of an indoor space. An operating position closer to the target of virus removal is desirable. And this slide shows the effect of discharge height of air cleaner when the horizontal discharge type was used. Uh, as you see in, in the comparison of these two graphs, uh, the operation position of the air cleaner was the same as S1, but discharge height was different, one meter or two meters. In case of using the horizontal discharge type air cleaner, it is, it is desire, desirable that the height is close to the height of the human respiratory system. Uh, for example, uh, when the horizontal type air cleaner was used at this position, S1, the age of air at location five appeared very low compared to other positions because the airflow from the air cleaner can directly reach this position. The horizontal discharge type air cleaner tended to show similar or lower age of air than the vertical discharge type air cleaner. However, some students directly facing the airflow from the air cleaner can feel uncomfortable and thus special caution is required in the arrangement and position of the horizontal type air cleaner. This slide shows the effect of flow rate of air cleaner. Uh, so the upper graphs shows the results when the vertical type discharge, uh, vertical discharge type was used, but the flow rate of the air cleaner was changed. And lower two graphs uh, compares the results uh, for the horizontal discharge type air cleaner when the air flow rate was changed. For both discharge types, the age of air decreased by about half as the flow rate doubled. For the vertical discharge type, the age of air in the front area was lower than that in the rear area. And the difference in the age of air between the front and rear areas decreased with increasing flow rate. So by increasing the flow rate of air cleaner, uh, the clean air can spread further in the indoor space. This slide shows the simulation results of natural ventilation flow. Uh, the windows and doors were fully opened and the airflow direction of natural ventilation is set to from outside to hallway. So in this direction, air was, air introduced into the classroom through natural ventilation was assumed to be clean. In other words, containing no viruses. The age of air was generally low at positions where the fresh air introduced through the windows passed directly, as you see in these areas. But it was relatively high in areas where the flow was recirculated. So uh, natural ventilation is helpful in reducing the concentration of indoor generated particles, but uh, the effect can be different uh, from position to position due to recirculation phenomenon. This slide shows the effect of natural ventilation, flow rate and direction. Uh, full open case, which corresponds to six air changes per hour, showed a lower age of air than half open case, 
implying that a higher natural ventilation flow rate is more favorable. Natural ventilation can be effective in reducing the concentration of the viruses generated indoors, but the local reduction effect indoors may vary widely depending on the direction of natural ventilation. And this slide shows the effect of using both air cleaners and natural ventilation. So for comparison, the y-axis range was set the same for all graphs throughout the slides, as you see in these slides. So the range of the age of air is set to from zero to 2000 for all graphs. So as you see in these graphs, the values of age of air are much lower compared to other graphs. So by using air cleaner and natural ventilation simultaneously, the age of air greatly decreased compared to the cases of only air cleaner or only natural ventilation case. For example, uh, for the case 15, where both air cleaner and natural ventilation was were used, showed an approximately 50% lower average age of air than case one, which is the only air cleaner operation case, and about 22% lower average age of air than case 11, which is the uh, only natural ventilation case. So the use of air cleaner and natural ventilation simultaneously is helpful in reducing the concentration of aerosols generated indoors. Uh, this is the conclusion of this paper. So it is recommended to maintain a higher filter efficiency of the air cleaner to reduce the probability of infection indoors. The age of air distribution was greatly affected by the flow rate, operating position, and discharge direction of the air cleaner. So uh, it is desirable to place the air cleaner properly uh, by considering the position where the reduction of viruses is important. The age of air was less influenced by the discharge height in case of the vertical discharge type air cleaner, but in case of the horizontal discharge type, it is desirable that the discharge height is close to the height of the human respiratory system. So by considering the height of sitting person or standing person. The local indoor air quality was greatly influenced by the direction and flow rate of natural ventilation. The age of air was much lower when both the air cleaner and natural ventilation were used simultaneously than when either of them was used alone. Therefore, it is recommended that air cleaners to be operated while windows and doors are opened to more effectively reduce the number concentration of virus containing particles generated indoors. Uh, uh, these are co-authors uh, of my papers to describe the theories and results of this presentation. And these are funding sources. Thank you for your attention. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Yu, for the wonderful presentation. Um, we'll move on to the Q&A. So as Amy mentioned earlier, uh, Dr. Yu can see us, but he cannot hear us. So we will primarily rely on the chat feature. Uh, for the I'm sorry that my speaker is not working now, so I cannot hear you. So please, uh, if you have questions, please leave me a uh, uh, text through the chatting screen. Is there, is so there is one question on the chat, which, which, which is from Van. The age oh, of uh, question to 
uh, Dr. Xiao Liang Wang. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, actually, uh, we initially uh, generated particles by incense burning. So we measured the concentration of aerosol particles by optical particle counters. So uh, it is the concentration of particles, all particles measured by the OPC. But as I showed, showed you earlier in the presentation, the particles generated by the incense burning was smaller than 10 micrometers, mostly in the sub-micrometer range. Uh, other questions or comments? Oh, yes. Uh, 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 thank you for your question. Uh, in this study, uh, we assume that uh, particles containing viruses were generated indoors by assuming that a, an infected person is sitting in the classroom and the person generates saliva droplets by coughing, sneezing, or talking. Uh, so we assume that the air from the outside by natural ventilation contains no viruses or very low concentration of viruses. So uh, natural ventilation was considered to quickly remove the particles possibly containing viruses generated indoors by the infected person sitting in the indoor place. Uh, other questions or comments? Hey, I don't see any other questions or comments. So if you don't have any, um, oh yeah, there is one more question. Oh, let me check the results. So uh, for both air cleaner and natural ventilation, the air flow rates were set the same. Uh, so the flow rates were 576 CMH. At the same flow rate, uh, we can compare the age of air between two conditions. So when air cleaners are used, the age of air is about in the range from about 1200. And in case of the natural ventilation, three ACH condition, uh, maybe the average may be similar, but locally, uh, at some local positions, uh, the age of air appears very low compared to only air, con air cleaner operation condition. So uh, if you are located near the window or door, then uh, you can directly face with the clean air, not cl I mean the uh, less virus containing air from the outside. So uh, at that position near the windows or doors, the concentration can be very low. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from uh, the audience? Thank you. Uh, other questions or comments?
Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions on the chat. So um, once again, uh, thank you, Dr. Yu, for the wonderful talk. And thanks to AAAR for providing us the opportunity to host this lecture this month. Um, if you don't have um, anything else, that would be the end of the session. And Amy, do you have any other closing remarks? Uh, thank you. Thank you for yes. uh, listening to my talk. Um, yes, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, it was really great. Um, and uh, please join us next month uh, for our next lecture. Hope to see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm sorry that my speaker does not working. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no worries at uh, all. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this lecture and I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you for listening. Thank you. It was, it was really, you. really good. Thank you. <laughs> so, bye-bye? Yep, all set. <laughs> oh, okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>